Hello everyone, today we will be exploring the map kinase signaling pathway in detail. We will explore into the mechanistic insights of map kinase signaling and the divergence within the map kinase pathway. Before we dive into the main content, a huge shout out to our sponsors, Consensus, for supporting the channel so that we can bring amazing content to you. We have also used Consensus to compile valuable information on map kinase signaling for this video. If you want to access the premium pack of Consensus, you can use the discount code available in the description box. And for those who are not familiar with Consensus, here is a quick snapshot of what Consensus is. Meet Consensus, the intelligent way to search for scientific research. Type in a question and let Consensus instantly sort and summarize trusted research findings all in one place. No more endless scrolling with Consensus, you find what you need fast, clear, and verified. Compare studies effortlessly, Consensus allows you to analyze research from various sources side by side, helping you to make informed decisions quickly. Personalize your research experience, create profiles that save your preferences, making it easier to access your most relevant topics. Collaborate seamlessly, share your findings with colleagues and collaborate in real time ensuring everyone is on the same page. Get Consensus today and simplify your research journey. The mitogen activated protein kinase signaling pathway, in short, which is also known as MAP kinase signaling pathway, serves as a fundamental vital communication system within the cells. Means when cells they need to communicate with the surrounding, they use MAP kinase signaling pathway. This pathway transmits signals from the cell surface to the nucleus, to the center of the cell. This signaling cascade plays a fundamental role in various biological processes such as cell proliferation which means when cell is going to increase in number that is cell proliferation, cell differentiation when one cell type is getting converted into another cell type, then you have stress response where cell is undergoing specific stress during that this signaling pathway can also be activated. Next is apoptosis when there is programmed cell death. Understanding this pathway is essential. It's very, very important for advancements in cell biology and also for developing therapeutic strategies against diseases like cancer and neurodegeneration. Initiation of the MAP kinase pathway by mitogen stimulation. The activation of the MAP kinase pathway begins with the binding of extracellular mitogens. These extracellular mitogens, these are the small molecules that have the ability to activate the MAP kinase pathway. These are growth factors, they can be cytokines, they can be hormones. And these molecules, they have a specific ability to bind with specific receptors known as receptor tyrosine kinases in short RTKs and these RTKs they are present on the cell membrane. These mitogens they are also known as ligands and these ligands they can induce dimerization as well as autophosphorylation of these receptors which are known as RTKs. After dimerization and the autophosphorylation they can create docking sites for adapter proteins like GRB2 which is known as growth factor receptor bound protein 2. This process can further recruit SOS known as son of 7 less and this particular molecule which is SOS can activate RAS and RAS is small GTPase protein and how RAS works it facilitate the exchange of GDP for GTP marking the first step of signal transduction that means once these processes are completed that will be the step one of MAP kinase signaling pathway. The three-tiered kinase cascade. The MAP kinase pathway operates through a three-tiered kinase cascade, which is a sequential activation of protein kinases that amplifies the signal as it moves downstream. What I mean by that is whenever there is activation of MAP kinase pathway, there are multiple molecules that are involved and that are activated one by one and that will amplify the signal by involving various molecules. Starting with MAP3K, which is MAP kinase kinase kinase. 
The first kinase in the cascade, which is RAF, R -A -F, is recruited to the membrane by a molecule called RAS. Upon activation, it phosphorylates and the next kinase in the sequence gets activated. Meaning, the entire MAP kinase pathway will start with the activation or recruitment of RAF, which is recruited by RA. And when it is activated, it will lead to the activation of further kinase. The next step is MAP2K, which is MAP kinase kinase. Activated MAP3K phosphorylates and activates MAP2K. In this case, MAP2K is MEK1-2. MAP2Ks, they are 12 specificity kinases. They are capable of phosphorylating both threonine and tyrosine residues on MAP kinases. So the next step here is the activation of MAP2 kinases. And MAP2 kinases, they have 12 specificity. Means they can activate both threonine residues as well as tyrosine residues on the different MAP kinases. The third one, which is MAPK, which means MAP kinase. The terminal kinase in the cascade, which is ERK1-2, JNK or P38, is activated by MAP2K. So the MAP2K, which has been activated by MAP3K, will further activate our terminal kinases, which are ERK1-2, JNK and P38. These MAP kinases then translocate to the nucleus. They are the regulatory proteins. They will translocate to the nucleus to regulate target gene expression and as well as the cytoplasmic substrate. So overall, it is an interesting pathway where molecules are getting recruited and further kinases, they are getting activated. And I've mentioned all the kinases that are involved in this particular pathway. All right, now let's discuss the divergence of MAP kinase pathways. What are the different types of MAP kinase pathways are there? Three primary MAP kinase pathways are there and each pathway is activated by distinct stimuli. Means there is a specific molecule or a signal that is involved in activating that pathway, which further will mediate specific cellular response. Let's talk about the first one, which is ERK pathway. ERK means extracellular signal regulated kinases. So ERK pathway is activated by growth factors and mitogens. These are the molecules. These are the molecules that are going to activate this ERK pathway. And what ERK pathway further is going to do is promote the cell progression, differentiation, as well as the survival of the cell. Now let's talk about the JNK pathway, which is the second one. JNK means C June N terminal kinase pathway. This is triggered by stress signals and those stress signals, they are, for example, UV radiation or inflammatory cytokines. These are the molecules. These are the molecules or the factors that are going to activate this particular pathway. And this pathway regulates apoptosis, immune response, as well as stress adaptation. By using that, cell can regulate the process of apoptosis. It can regulate the immune response as well as how to regulate the stress that is also included under this particular pathway. The third pathway is P38 MAP kinase pathway. And in this one, this pathway is activated by environmental stress as well as inflammatory cytokines. This P38 pathway, where P38 molecule is involved, it will mediate inflammation. Again, apoptosis is also regulated by this pathway as well as the tissue repair mechanisms. All right, that was all about the basics of MAP kinase pathway, which includes the introduction of MAP kinase signaling, initiation of the MAP kinase pathway, as well as the divergence of MAP kinase pathway, including the three trade kinase cascade. I hope you were able to understand this particular pathway in more detail. In the next video, we will understand the functions of MAP kinase pathway. So please stay tuned and watch the upcoming video to understand the functions of MAP kinase pathway. Thank you so much for watching the video. I'll meet you in the next one. Till then, take care everyone.